Hey everyone, welcome back to part 3 of Mummy Berserker. I'm Ultraviolent4. In the last episode we... I don't remember. <laughs> so it's actually been about a week since I last played. I can apologise now for the break between the last playthrough ending and this one starting. It was roughly a week. I think I recorded the first two episodes the day after the last one finished. And since then, I've been so busy with IRL that I haven't had time to either play or draw. So, sorry about that. Did you know, by the way, that IRL and in real life have the same number of syllables? Hmm. <laughs> anyway, so I'll also apologize in advance if there are any really long-term plans that I made and then now it seems like I'm forgetting about them all. It's probably because I actually did forget. So let's take a look at ourselves. Um, our menus are funky, it looks like. So there's a bit of an ongoing, an ongoing mission to update these menus. Uh, the last time I played, they were thin and gold. These ones look very thick and gold, and also buggy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so as for our training, we've got a little bit more maces and flails to go to get to the Mindelay on our plus three flail, which is kind of. A mediocre weapon by this stage but with the insane AC we have to go along with the shield that we've also got um, I don't really care if we kill things slowly because our, we're unlikely to die ourselves but the plan is as far as I can remember anyway get maces and flails to Mindelay and then I think we'll start training some slings so we've got a fastibulus of velocity uh, and we also have some curare needles on a blowgun and because Blow guns, sorry, because because cross training. Wait, let me start again. This is hard. Okay, because throwing cross trains with slings, and because blow guns are <laughs> controlled by the throwing skill, when we train slings, we'll get better at blow guns, which sounds very strange, but it is what it is. All right, I think that's about it. Uh, we've got four pips of Trog Piety, so we've got a not too reliable Brothers in Arms right now, but um, with more Piety that will go back up. And if we can get up to five and six Piety and stay around there, then we'll get the ability to um, potentially get weapons gifts, which would be really nice. I know we've got some evocables, so we've got Enslavement, Flame, a bunch of Ice Blast, some other evocables. Um, so maybe one day in the future we might train evocations, but I can see that never happening. Uh, because mummy aptitudes are just so bad, you don't have enormous amounts of experience to go around. Although, in saying that, uh, because we are trog, it's not as bad as usual. Because the whole, well almost the entire right side of our skill menu is actually officially off limits. Or at least... It's off limits insofar as you want to stay alive because you don't want berserk trolls to be dumped on your head by an angry troll. Um, Black Mumbers. I don't remember the last time we fought one, but I know that we have um, Ice Blast ones that can't miss. So we should be able to kill those if this goes badly. Alright, that was alright. Alright, that was alright. Some great commentary there. This Vestibulus is actually shredding stuff, even though we don't have any sling seal. It's pretty good. New amulet. What do we have on at the moment? Apparently we don't have one. We have six identify scrolls, so I don't mind just using one. It's cursed in accuracy. And I notice we have another scroll that I should just do. It's vulnerability. Alright. Uh, I'm not going to drop that vulnerability scroll because it can be useful with the hex ones that we have, particularly with enslavement. Um, it's also good if we need to fear something in a pinch. Uh, if it's an, an enemy with higher MR that's unlikely to be affected by fear because fear checks MR of enemies, we can make it vulnerable first and then we could read the fear scroll. Although we need to be careful that we don't uh, make ourselves vulnerable at the wrong time. With most normal species, if you are vulnerable and you don't want to be, you can... Um, Drink a potion of. Oh, this is no good. Uh, you can drink a potion of cancellation and it will remove it, but as a mummy, we can't quaff, so we don't have that option. 
Alright, so we got the Seven Headed Hydra, which was scary enough on its own, but now Black Mamba has turned up too. Um, I'm considering just throwing out a brother in arms. Uh, I could also just start walking back. Mm. It's a really long way to get back to an upstairs. Uh, the reason that I could do that though is because the Black Mamba is faster than the Hydra. So as we walk along here, the Black Mamba is likely to end up in front of the Hydra. And then I'm less afraid of that than I am of a seven headed Hydra. Um, other option is... I could take these guys back to this hallway. It's one tile. Uh, and then I could shoot Lightning Rod through the Black Mamba to potentially finish off the Hydra. I think I like that plan. So in order to do that, I'm going to Ice Blast the Hydra one more time. Now it's nearly dead, we can probably finish it off. Alright. Um, well that, that worked out better. Because the Hydra wants to be in front of the Black Mamba, but the Black Mamba is faster, so they're kind of getting each other tied up. See, they're switching and then they're switching back. It's actually giving us more times to Ice Blast them. Alright, yeah, this is good. And now I think, let's try a Lightning Rod. Uh, uh, I don't really want to go again. Uh, maybe I should have. I'll get in the open and I'll Ice Blast them one more. I think this should kill the Hydra. Uh, not quite. Uh, we'll go the last Lightning Rod. Alright, good. You feel more in touch with the powers of depth. So we just made it to experience level 13. As a mummy, that gives us a bonus now to necromancy spells. But we can't cast any necromancy spells, so we don't really care. <laughs> if you're playing a mummy necromancer though, and I do have one of those on this channel, um, level 13 is a, a very good time because all your spells are about to be boosted. Alright, so we got Schultz, um, which is probably, yeah, I'd say that's bad for us. Um, I'm just going to keep walking away. We have a lot of AC and a shield, so a centaur is not going to kill us from range anymore. Uh, but for most characters, Schultz is usually the worst out of Swamp and Schultz. Uh, what's good though with Trog is that uh, we can get Trog's hand for bonus MR, so if we use that properly, uh, we can try to avoid being mesmerized by sirens and avatars. Which means, what was that other one? It was spider, wasn't it? Yeah, because you always get spider on a mummy, it's just the rule of crawl. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to have to do spider as our first rune, which is going to be fun. Um, okay, all the more reason to try to get um, some slings up because everything in there in spider's pit is susceptible to poison so having um, a blowgun being workable is really strong in fact even just using a blowgun even with zero throwing skill in spider is still pretty strong but uh, with some training it's even better so I do this amulet <laughs> Amulet of Rage, which we can't use. I am messing up my weapon choice. I I tried to um, shoot it with the Festivulus. I walked into closer, then I switched, and then I switched again, and I basically um, just kept doing the wrong one. I didn't fire at all, but I walked a whole bunch closer. It's a bit of a fail. Anyway, on to left five. Um, let's see, we've already got a plain cloak, but uh, this might be better in terms of fashion. So I'm going to take one of these death yaks out. We don't have to check escape hatches in here because we're not going to be orb running. Um, but I wanted to bring this death yak up on its own. I think we can probably fight one death yak. If we're losing, we'll just walk around this pillar or one of these pillars uh, to regen our HP and then we'll try again. It can do up to 30 damage. So if we drop below 60, um, I'm going to start walking away. But we didn't. Because uh, you've got to remember that enemies can random energy you. So you want to be, before you start kiting them, you want to be, um, you want to be two hits away from dying. 
Although in saying that, we if we had 30 HP, no, sorry, if we had six under 60 HP, we'd still be pretty safe because you got to factor in that we have um, some guaranteed damage reduction, and we're wearing a, a plate armor, so we got a fair bit of that. Uh, a linworm would be absolutely terrifying for a regular mummy. We've been fortunate enough to find a plate armor with fire resistance though, so it is still scary. Um, what was the number? We ha I had to know this for my spriggan. It's something like 40 something damage that are max. Um, where is it? 3d18. That's way more than that. That's 54. 54 damage. Yeah, so that this can potentially two shot us. Uh, which is really scary. I don't think they're susceptible to cold, even though you think they might be. So these guys, um, they have no resistances. You look at a limbworm and you think it's a fire breathing red dragon looking thing. It probably has resistance to fire and it's probably susceptible to cold. Both wrong. <laughs> Not resistant to fire at all. Alright, so let's, I think what I want to do here, because this is dangerous enough, that it can two shot us is I'm gonna cure curare it. That's going to slow it down as well as do a whole bunch of damage to it. And now if we take a max damage fire breath, we'll go back upstairs. I didn't mean to switch to the flail. I meant to do the vestibulus so we can shoot it from range. Okay, he's nearly dead. I don't mind just hitting him with the flail now. Taking this slowly. Good. Nice. Our maces and flails goes to 14, which is the Mindalay. So, how about we start training some slings? And I think hmm, we should also train some armor. Uh, we'd get pretty good returns out of it, especially considering we're wearing a plate armor. What I'm going to do is focus fighting, focus shields. We've got shields on going to 15, that's good. Um, and then we're going to turn throwing on. Um, and I'm going to take throwing to maybe 10 and then assess from there. If you get, oh, not throwing, we want slings. Wait, 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 wait. I'm getting messed up by the blowgun. That was almost a mistake. All right, let's see. <laughs> uh, the point I was going to make is that if you get throwing to 8, that's uh, it makes your blowguns as effective as they used to be before blowguns got horribly nerfed because you can imagine they were super overpowered on every character. But our Fastibulus has a Mindalay of 14. Alright, new plan. <laughs> uh, let's take our, our slings to 14. There we go. We'll train that. We'll focus the other two. And I think... Once we get our shield to 15, which is where our shield penalty goes, or maybe, I don't know, maybe when we're close to it, but I want to train a bit more shields before we turn armor on. You can see our, our aptitudes are all mostly minus two here, except for fighting, so I don't want to train a million things at once. On any other character, I'd slam on armor, slam on dodging, just go absolutely crazy, but not on a mummy. I'm going to show some restraint. <laughs> Might be a first. Uh, well, probably since the last time I played a mummy. <laughs> um, Curare would be really good on Death Yaks too, but uh, they're just they're speed ten and they're just melee enemies, so I'm not I'm not worried. Um, I maybe shouldn't have brought two up with me. That's okay. We can put them in this choke point here. Death Yaks can't open doors, believe it or not, and we can just fight them like this. <laughs> Oh, I was about to say, even though our weapon is mediocre, they're still not really doing much damage to us. And just as I was about to say that, he hit us about four times in a row pretty hard. Um, oh, this guy's owning us. So I'll bring him upstairs. I don't want to be about to die, and then I have to go upstairs. Um, I think it is generally true, though, the principle that I was saying, in that um, we were killing them pretty well, even though it was pretty slowly. We're just hitting stuff with a, as far as damage goes, a protection weapon is just plain. So it's like we got a, a plain plus three flail in terms of damage, which is quite
quite slow. Ah, yes, I've just remembered. We have a uh, a new cloak to try. So we've got this purple one at the moment. Uh, let's see what this is. It's black. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't like this one. So the black matches the shield that we've got on at the moment, and I mean our armor is kind of dark. But I think I like the contrast of the purple one. Yeah, yeah, I like this better. It's a bit more um, showy, a bit more pizzazz, you might say. And I know some of you laugh at me for this, but I do, I do honestly think that um, style is important here. All right, so we see a. Um, I still never figured out how to say this. Uh, melee eye. Um, really dangerous because they're really fast and they can smite you. So they do a lot of damage really quickly. And because he's at the back here, um, that's a bit of a worry. So what I'm going to try to do, I was going to try to run away because it hadn't seen us. And I think that's true. So as long as it doesn't come to check out what's going on here, this is a lot better. Okay. If it, if it had come, I think what I would have done is lightning rod through all the killer bees to hit the melee eye immediately. Uh, you always need to respect those. They have fairly low MR, so you can see here, even with no evocations, we've got a 46% chance to enslave it, which I think I will do. We charmed it. Okay, because when you see bees, that means a lot more bees. Um, and melee eyes are vulnerable to poison. So, oh, actually we can make it fight the Catoplopus. That's very useful. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, so it's becoming a, a stone now. Uh, if you could fight the Catoplopus, that would be even better. Um, be extremely careful of Catoplopuses, Catoplopuses? Uh, when you're a mummy. Again, like with the whatever it was before, the vulnerability, you can't quaff cancellation if you start being petrified. So you need to be careful of those. I'm going to try to enslave another bee. Actually, they're pretty useful. Go. Oh wait, we got one. Alright. Everyone get on the Catoplopus. They're all just getting petrified. I would love to get the melee eye. Okay, good. Now, I've got a force more in my options to make me hit enter or space every time one of this this dust hits something. So I can fight him a bit kept, uh, a bit more quickly than you should. If you don't have that, make sure you tab really slowly against the Catoplopus. Uh, <laughs> not, not least because it can hit you for 36 damage. So if you're tabbing too fast and you get hit for 36, it's a worry as well. Um, but you really have to make sure that you're not getting stuck in the calcifying dust. Here's the other melee eye. It's, it's kind of good and bad that they're all split up like this. Um, it means I don't have to fight them all at once, which is nice. Ah, good. This was exactly what I wanted. I want to have <laughs> have a, a a bit of a fight club here of a melee eye v melee eye 1v1. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. This guy has a, a glowing broad axe. That's something to note about them as well. Um, they always have axes. And like an Entropy Weaver, their tile doesn't show it, so um, this guy's got a plain hand axe, whereas this one had a glowing or enchanted broad axe. But I didn't take the time to look at them, but you see here, one was much more dangerous than the other. So unless you're paying attention, uh, you can just get wrecked by them. Uh, it's much worse on an Entropy Weaver, by the way, because they have four attacks. So, uh, if you don't notice that that Entropy Weaver that you're fighting has a, um, say, an Executioner's Axe, which I've seen before, and then it's going to swing at you with it four times and hit you with the Executioner Axe damage on every one of those hits, uh, you're in trouble. <laughs> so, yeah. I think they're the only two um, Melee Eyes and Entropy Weavers that don't show... Um, their weapons on their tile. Alright, so we've got the killer bee here. Um, it's kind of dangerous because it can berserk bees. Um, I'm not too worried because we're immune to poison 
and we've got really good AC and shield really but yeah 34 AC in lair is pretty absurd it's like we're playing a gargoyle so yeah who said who said mummy was a bad species we're basically a gargoyle right now uh, not really but yeah we have we do have a lot of AC um, when we finish the B vault we get a whole bunch of food as our prize but as a mummy we can't eat any of it that's a shame uh, you see here another lightning rod um, there's no point picking it up um, your evocables all share a cooldown so there's no point having multiple uh, fire floods, lightning rods, any of those if you use one you use charges on all of them um, shooting the lava snake here um, I don't want to fire my sling bullets into the lava so I'm going to switch to the stones I don't really care if we lose some stones there's in fact another pile of them just sitting there to replace them um, I see here's a ruined hand crossbow um, I'm curious enough to test this out we've only trained two slings this might be better this is say a lek eh, plus two hand crossbow velocity uh, the upside of this is that it has a lower Mindelay. Uh, its Mindelay is only 10. Uh, but this one does not cross train with throwing. I don't know. I mean, that's not a great reason. Uh, uh, are there lots of bolts everywhere? 106 more. Eh. I made my decision. I'm just going to stick with the Fastibulus. Uh, okay. Um, I was happy because I saw the enchant armor. Then I was briefly really afraid because Dream Shape are terrifying. And then I remembered because we do not breathe, um, we do not get slept. So Dream Shape do nothing to us. They just give us a whole bunch of experience for what is otherwise a relatively trivial monster. I want to get, damn, I wanted to get in this, in this spot so that we could only be hit by one monster, but then we got cut off. Uh, this is probably the worst thing that I could have done because by backing in, we can now get hit by the lava snake. Um, can we enslave the lava snake? I believe so. They have pretty low MR, 54%. Uh, let's go again. We're just running through our I want him enslavement, but that's okay because the dream shape just blocked it. So I'm gonna kill the black mamba. All right, and now I'm not afraid because the lava snake can't leave the lava, so it's not gonna kill us. We can just walk away from it. It was just a threat when we were also fighting that other stuff. All right, that's good. Uh, there's a paralysis one in there. I know, I remember. We are carrying around a ring of flight. So we can go claim that for free. <laughs> nice, we flap into the air. Um, here's a crystal ball of energy. I'm, just, I'm gonna bring it over, but I'm gonna drop it. It's an extremely dangerous item to use on a mummy. I mean, not that you'd ever use one on a berserker anyway, but um, one thing it does when it fails is confuse you. <laughs> uh, and that's not what you want. Um, when you're a mummy. Alright, so we got 36 paralysis charges. Did we really pick up that many from that wand? We gained 23 charges from that. That's amazing. Alright, so we've got we've got paralysis charges forever. Um, I'm using my fastibulus instead of our our thing. Uh, Trogger's given us some sling bullets, which is nice. Uh, which just reminds me, I really shouldn't have even cared about looking at bolts. Uh, if I wanted to use the hand crossbow, because yeah, Trog's gonna give us ammunition. Uh, you might be wondering why I'm hanging onto our brand weapon scroll. I could be using it on our Fastibulus. The answer is that I don't mind. Um, I don't mind velocity on it as a brand. Um, so I'm going to keep it in the event that we find something like an evening star or even a demon whip if we're extremely lucky. Um, 
Okay, we don't have, I don't think we have any C invis for that guy. Um, we can fire our lightning rod through where I know where the bogger is, uh, and we can keep going. So with the lightning rod, you can actually, you can actually increase the area that you fired at. You see how, like this, it's spreading out. Um, although the more tiles you spread it out on, the less damage it does. Um, the bogger might have stepped to us, so I'm going to spread it out a little bit. I'm going to go again. As you stand in place, it goes stronger every time. I don't know if we killed him. Yeah, I don't know. I never saw anything get summoned, so I'm going to say we probably killed the bogger. Here's another one. Um, let's walk away from him. I would like to have these enemies in a choke point so that we don't get overwhelmed by bogget summons. Um, in lair they can summon hydras and spriggan riders and all sorts of nasty stuff. Oh boy. Alright, we've got a bogget, a spiny frog, a wolf, and a hydra. Well, now we're trapped. Um, let's see. Enslavement on the wolf, this one. 46% chance. I'm going to give it a go. Alright, we got him. Excellent. Uh, because we did, we can now switch with him. If that had failed, I think very likely my next move would have been to read a fear scroll to get everything away from us. Uh, but because I got lucky on that roll, I'm able to switch out. And now we can fight this stuff one-on-one -on -one in the choke point. It's only a four-headed hydra. I'm not... Maybe I should be afraid. But I'm not too afraid of only four heads. We have a lot of AC. Uh, each head can only do 18 max, so if you have 34 AC, um, most of the time you're not going to take too much damage. This is getting a bit nuts though. Spriggan Riders are really scary. They're fast and they hit hard. Um, this might be the fear play. Although our fears are kind of valuable. I think... Um, Maybe what we do here is actually teleport. Um, so we'll, we'll try to hold on to one of our fear. I was going to say, and let's hope we don't land in the end chamber. Alright, we can take a Spriggan up. I'm not too afraid of a Spriggan either. This is a plain one. The non-rider variety. We can't do anything to him. What is he actually doing? Are we just missing him over and over again? Spriggan blocks our attack. Spriggan, we miss a bunch. Blocks our attack. We do. We hit but do no damage. Blocks our attack. Okay, yeah. See, that Spriggan's just got a buckler, but proving once again that shields are amazing. <laughs> Slings to three. This is a seven-headed Hydra. That's a bit scarier. Let's take it upstairs. We're probably okay fighting it. Um, just the one, maybe. We got a lot of fear. Yeah, we can start. This feels really dangerous. <laughs> Alright, no, it's okay. We lived, so it must have been must have been a correct decision, or at least not a bad one. I think that's how it works. If you don't die from it, then it couldn't have been incorrect. Because otherwise you would have died. Change my mind. All right, just gonna fight all this random stuff. Um, change my mind. I don't want to fight all this random stuff anymore. I accidentally just walked off the stair. <laughs> there we go. Be a street player and we'll fight the Komodo dragon on its own. Um, Alpha Stibulus is actually really strong against the Blink Frog because um, we can hit it when it blinks away from us, but I was kind of being lazy there. Um, the Blowgun is two. Speaking of which, I'm going to try to hit the Spriggan with a Curare. Uh, we got it. Okay, so he's much less dangerous now. And then as he approaches, we'll go with a few slings, which um, should actually have been with my sling bullets. We'll go up, we'll wait. All right. Um, and if 
If Chug would be so kind as to gift us. <laughs> uh, as I was saying, if Chug would be so kind as to gift us a weapon here, um, that would be great. Uh, but Trog heard me. <laughs> Although he trolled us, it's only a rune mace, which I'm not even going to try. Uh, there is a chance for any god gift that it's of the distortion brand. So I actually, I can't imagine a mace type that I would want. Even a lek, maybe. Yeah, I don't even think I'd want an elek mace. Um, so yeah, I'm just not even going to try. So that was amazing in that Trog, Trog heard me start to say it. And was all like, I got you fam, don't worry. Um, but he didn't really have us. Okay, that was getting a bit, a bit too scary, but I kept going. <laughs> We're kind of trapped in there. I could have done stuff, I guess. Um, we could have enslaved the water macassan or moccasin. I like macassan better. We could have enslaved the water macassan and then swapped with it so that the Hydra couldn't follow us. That is an impressive summon there by that Boggit. Seems like a lot of Boggits. Normally there, I feel like there are maybe two or three in this ending, and this feels like we fought about five of them. Um, I'm just gonna go back upstairs. We didn't get trampled, fortunately. The elephants could have trampled us off, um, but fighting any summoner on a stair is always a powerful play because the summons can't follow you up. Oh no, you're blundered into a Zot trap. See, this is why in the last, in the last playthrough, I was being careful to stick to our red carpet even in lair. Even when we had fully cleared it, you can still get Zot traps in lair like this. And in fact, if we get unlucky on this effect here, this might actually just kill us. It could send us to the abyss. Um, also. Um, one of its effects is that it can do a combination of slow, confusion, and teleport. So, there is a chance right now that this teleports us into the end vault here, surrounded by Sprig and Riders, and that sort of thing, and confuses us. And as a mummy, confusion is effectively paralysis. So we might have just died due to this, due to this, <laughs> this non-optimal trap play right now that you're seeing and if I sound salty it's because I am <laughs> all right what did we get contaminated with residual magic okay that's not too bad okay we got we got lucky after getting unlucky um, as a mummy we cannot be mutated so normally what happens here is if you get yellow contaminated like this it's going to give you bad mutes as it dissipates uh, what it's going to do instead to us is rot our stats, which is not a huge deal. I'm just going to wait for it to go away though. So our in went down from 7 to 6. So in the end, not too bad, but again, that could potentially have killed us right then. It also could have done shadow creatures, so it could have surrounded us with multiple hydras. Um, that sort of thing could have, done, could have summoned demons. Um, could have summoned a Zitzimul, I think, which would have had Dispel and Dead, which could very easily have one-shot us. So, yeah. yeah. Could have been very, very bad. <laughs> Staff of Wizardry does nothing for us. Uh, we're never, ever casting spells, so we don't care about that. Alright. Uh, do you care a little bit about the Basilisk? Um, it's only a 16% chance to petrify us, although I think it's better safe than sorry. So I'm going to put our protection from magic ring on instead of plus 3 evasion. Um, that should take us to effectively or oh, a 2% chance. It's pretty low. Uh, because if we do get petrified, again, we can't cancellation out of it. Um, and by putting on the ring, I'm saving the small amount of piety that Trog's hand would cost us. Um, as all you new, newer players would know, you never want to use your Trog abilities because you want to save your piety for the weapon gifts. <laughs> um, no, that's wrong. You do want to use your piety. But in this, in this instance, I do actually want to save my Trog piety for gifts if I can. Uh, because, yeah, our plus three protection flare is really not very impressive right now. Yeah. 
Black Mamba wasn't smart enough there to step forward to let the Komodo Dragon also hit us. Um, and hey, we finished left. Nice. Episode 3 finished left. We're on a blistering pace right now. I guess we're playing at Berserker. Um, although Mummy Berserker doesn't have most of the benefits of a Berserker, but still. Uh, this run's going really nicely so far. So what do we got next? We have found Orcish Mines. It's on D9. We've been to... Dungeon 12. I feel like we had to run from stuff. Oh, there was Harold on D12. Okay. Maybe, I don't remember. Maybe that was before we found RF. Uh, oh. I think Harold's been changed, actually. I don't think he's the same anymore. I was reading a commit. Uh, yes, okay. So, in fact, Harold would be um, an example of someone who terrifies you to find as a mummy. Because balls of fire. Often when you find him, you are still vulnerable to fire, but no longer a thing. So I believe what he has now is double his damage. 20 doesn't seem like double damage. Maybe he only had 10 before, I'm not sure. Um, but I believe the commit doubled his damage, um, gave him harpoon shot and sentinel's mark. That's instead of bolt of fire and blink. So Harpoon Shot is a thing that Swamp Worms have where they pull you next to them. So I can imagine th this being an extremely deadly combination, particularly if you're someone who's fragile. So I'm imagining some mage. Um, you auto-explore into him at the, the edge of your line of sight. He Harpoon Shots you next to him. He then nets you. And then while you're netted, he then starts going ham on you, getting... Um, st bonus stab damage with his double damage attacks. So that could be kind of crazy. What else was on D12? Oh yeah, right. There was a, a deep elf mage. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I want to avoid that stair. Let's go to one of these stairs we don't know yet. Um, that's kind of a scary enemy, especially if it has a lightning bolt. Um, we can curare it now. We didn't have that before. And we also have a bunch more fighting and thus extra HP than we did last time. Um, well, there's the Deep of Death Mage. I want to immediately get off the wall so that we don't get double zapped. And I'm going to pull out our blowgun in anticipation. Where did, he, where did it go? Did say, yeah, surely he saw us. Okay, here's a, here's a wizard. Uh, this 10% confused chance here might look like you can ignore it, but you cannot. If we got effectively paralyzed right now next to Deep Elf Mage, we would die. So we're gonna throw the Trog's hand on. Um, I could potentially have put the Ring of Protection from Magic on, um, but in this instance where the Deep Elf Mage is actually kind of threatening, I don't wanna lower our defenses. So let's see if we can curare. Apparently not. Here's the Cold type, which is actually fine for us. Um, we just saw there, we ate a, a throw icicle. Um, throw icicle has some irresistible damage. So even though we have protection from cold, it still is always going to hurt. Um, but that's much more preferable than if, oh yep, yeah, see here's, here's Harold with the net. Um, there's a flail of draining there. That's a sort of an upgrade. I'm just going to walk back to the stair. Wait, Harold blinked? I've been lied to. Harold isn't meant to have blink. <laughs> Maybe it hasn't been updated yet, but have a look. It's showing his spells as Harpoon Shot and Sentinel's Mark. And I just saw there, Harold casts a spell, Harold blinks. Harold is cheating right now. So I wonder if that means he's not going to Harpoon Shot us, or if he actually has every spell. He's got blink, Harpoon Shot, Oh, that would mean he has Bolt of Fire. If he has Bolt of Fire, he's much scarier, actually. I'd rather he, he have Harpoon Shot. Hmm. So how do I how do I treat this, then? Do I assume he hasn't... He's been half updated? His description's been updated, but not the, the actual... The actual spell list? Or does he just have everything? Or maybe he just has blinking still. Alright. 
Well, okay, so I have to treat Harold with maximum respect right now. So I'm gonna try to curare him when we see him. Actually, I should check this flail of protect of training. Um, against most enemies, that's probably preferable. You know how I would show Harold maximum respect would actually be to make a brother in arms, which I might do if he does demonstrate to us that he has bolt of fire. All right, flail of draining. It's plus zero, but draining is a, a better brand than protection against most things. So you're gonna use that as our standard weapon. Um, Draining's actually, it's a really good brand in a three rune game. Um, becomes fairly useless in extended where most things resist it, but for this part of the game it's good. So another deep elf mage. See that it's another uh, cold type, which is good. Fighting's going to 14. Um, okay, I don't want to fight orcs, I just want to fight Harold. Um, and I didn't explain our plan, but my plan is to do d12 here and then head into the orcish mines. Okay, the phantom. Um, it is better. Um, it is better to use the protection flail against the phantom. Uh, being undead, draining does nothing to it. It's like, it's like us. We're not bothered at all by negative energy. Neither is the phantom. Uh, same for the shadow. The green ugly thing. Um, well, it's the perfect type for us. Uh, we don't care about green because we're immune to poison. So we have we ha we do have throwing nets. I don't know. Did we steal that off Harrow just then? I don't think so. The basilisk. Oh, it's just him. That's alright. Um, I want to have the throwing net quivered when I've just got the flail out so that I remember. And I actually should also quiver the sling bullets on our fastibulus because I keep forgetting to do that. Against the more challenging enemies, we want the extra damage boost from it. Alright, here's the deep elf mage. I'm heading back to the stairs. Um, I'm not I'm not gonna curare him because he's already demonstrated to us that he's the cold type. So I'm not afraid that we're about to get double zapped by a lightning bolt. Um, I'm using the wrong weapon. Oh boy. Okay, here's Rupid. Um, okay, so he has a 37% chance to paralyze us and a 37% chance to confuse us, which is effectively paralyzed. So it's like he's got two different paralysis spells here. Uh, he also goes Berserk. Uh, so the thing we need to do before anything else is to throw on a Trog's hand so that we have the MR to bring his spells down to 1% chance. Now what I want to do is make... Well, we could do a couple of things. We could just try to walk to the stairs here and just get away from him. But if he goes Berserk, he's going to be effectively hasted and he'll just run us down. And when he's Berserk, he's hasted and mitered and then we're gonna be in a lot of trouble. Even with our 27 AC, with a Berserk Rupert with a great mace, he's going to destroy us. So, um, note this, you newer Trog players. You are not saving your piety for weapons. You're saving your piety for Trog's abilities. So, you have an amazing ability here in Brothers in Arms. If you use a bunch of these guys, you'll kill anything in the game. I mean anything. Um, I mean, Orbs of Fire will mow down Brothers in Arms. They'll die really quickly. But if you make enough of them, they will kill Orbs of Fire for you. So the point is, with some bros and some bros in your arms, you can fight anything, including Rupert. So we're going to make probably two... We'll see how this two-headed ogre goes. He might actually just beat Rupert. Okay, he got he got confused, so we're gonna make another one. 
Uh, Rupert is angry too. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, the Iron Troll will do it. The Iron Troll should beat Rupert. Um, because we got some kind of mediocre rolls first. I mean, the double-headed one was fine, but the regular Ogre was a bit mediocre. But a Berserk Iron Troll. Look how much damage they do. They bite for 35. They claw twice for 25. When they're then berserked, um, he he should win. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't. And what would be great is if we could find Harold right now. I'm gonna yell to try to attract him uh, while we've got an Iron Troll, and that would just that would deal with our Harold problem as well. Okay, oh, he's slowed, so that means his Berserk ran out. So he's um, gonna time out soon. Okay, it's a 10% chance of confusion on the Orc Wizard. I don't want to risk it. I'm going to put our Protection from Magic Ring on. Bring it down to... Okay, well, he doesn't have Confuse. So I imagine it would be 1% or 0. Two-headed Ogres, they used to be scary. Not anymore. I wonder if Rupert got shafted. I feel like he should have shown up by now. Yeah, done exploring. I'm gonna go Shift X Control F to get the floor. So I'm saying Rupert, but I mean Harold. Harold isn't here anymore. Harold used to be here, and he's not. So either Harold is actually Rupert, <laughs> and I mean, have you ever seen Harold and Rupert at the same time? I'm pretty sure I have. Okay, so that that conspiracy is um, not true. Um, so he probably got shafted. Damn it! <laughs> I was gonna say I'm just gonna have a look down here. Maybe we can find him. Um, but we got punished. So there's actually there's a Bailey on this floor, um, which would be nice to do. Okay, so I was intending to do Orcish Mines after D12, uh, but because of this, we're gonna have to do this one. So I'm going to read a magic mapping. Um, it's worth finding Bailey. Baileys have a lot of good loot normally. Um, so I can tell you that this one on the left is going to be Vault's entrance. And this one on the right is going to be our Bailey entrance. Um, just because I know this Bailey is often surrounded by water. And that's a Vault's entrance. But if you didn't know, uh, what you can do is go Shift X and look for downstairs. And see, this one will show you the portal while not using um, not using vaults as a valid downstairs. So that's how you find which one is a portal if you have multiple options on a floor. Yeah, Chug gives us more sling bullets. Nice. So I'm going to try to get into the Bailey without fighting this stuff in here because there's likely to be a bunch of really scary enemies. All right, here's a an ogre mage. 26% um, confused. We can't have that, so let's Trog's hand. I'm half tempted to make a brother in arms so we can make a run for in here. Um, which isn't horrible because uh, these guys can have lightning bolt, they can have bolt of fire, which we're not resistant to, and they can have crystal spear. So I'm actually going to do it. We're just going to make a bro in arms. We got a kind of crappy one again. Um, so we can help fight our way to the Bailey. I'm also going to Curare the Ogre Mage. I think it's scary enough to warrant that. That is an Ice Dragon. We have a... We have a Rune Door in there. Maybe there's some kind of crazy vault or floor going on here. Because to see, just here in the open, to see an Ogre Mage and an Ice Dragon on D13 is a bit worrying. I mean, maybe if they were in the Vault's entrance, but no, you don't get Ice Dragons in Vault's entrances. So, I don't know what's going on here. Um, half tempted to make another bro, but we have RC, so I'm not as afraid of an Ice Dragon. I wonder if we could paral paralyze it. It's 30%. Dead a dream. Okay, no. Alright, I'm taking this slowly. Alright, we're fine. Our bro's still alive. Let's 
he's getting distracted by a crimson imp. But that's okay. Um, Central warrior. Could we enslave him? No, thirty percent chance. I'm bringing him. There are two of them. Okay, so there's there's something kind of crazy going on on this floor. Um, I'm gonna make another bro in arms. No, I'm not. We failed it. There we go. Okay, because I'm I'm expecting more crazy stuff to show up. We've seen two central warriors, an ogre, an ogre mage, and an ice dragon so far. And there's Urug. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, this floor's a bit nuts. Okay, so let's tell our double-headed ogre to go on Urug. Yeah, look at it. I think our ogre's winning. Come on, bro. Not quite. Uh, let's go again. Let's go again. Let's go again. Okay, uh, that was crappy. We only got a polar bear. Um, and now Piety's dropped. Oh, no, it's alright. It killed Urug anyway. I was going to say, our Piety's dropped to the point where our brothers in arms are becoming kind of unreliable. Oh, that's okay. Um, a scroll of blinking there on Urug, which was good. Um, I potentially could have curated her as well, but the reason I didn't is because one, all the crazy stuff that's still showing up, but also all the slime creatures. So I, I just wanted a bit more firepower. I didn't want to mess around um, switching to blowguns, shooting blowguns, that sort of nonsense. And it looks like we're going to get in. Let's get in. Um, Okay, I think this is a good one. I don't remember. Anyway, I'm going to leave this here for now. So if you join me in the next one, we'll be doing this Bailey. And then hopefully living through it. And then if we do, we'll be heading into the Orcish Mines. See you then.